no problem. We've seen way too many hurtful and false rumors about our parents, Kim Porter and Sean Combs, and about our mom's tragic death. So, we need to clear the air. Claims that our mom wrote a book are not true, and anyone saying they have her manuscript is lying. But get ready, because things are heating up. Diddy's son, Justin, just went to court, ready to spill everything, family secrets, shocking truths, and drama that'll blow your mind. What could be so bad that his own son is taking him to court? Buckle up because this is only the beginning. Four of his seven children released a statement on Instagram saying they want to clear up false rumors about their mother. Meanwhile, a new accuser is coming forward. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky has the latest. After Sean Combs' recent arrest, four of his children posted a statement online. They said the rumors about their parents' relationship and their mom, Kim Porter, are hurtful and false. They want her to be remembered as a loving, kind woman, not dragged through conspiracy theories. Meanwhile, things are getting worse for Diddy. A new lawsuit has surfaced, with Talia Graves accusing Diddy and his bodyguard of drugging, binding, and assaulting her in 2001, and even recording the act. It's a pain that reaches into your very core of who you are and leaving emotional scars that may never fully heal. Diddy has officially pleaded not guilty to criminal conspiracy charges, denying any involvement in abusing women. And Aaron Katursky joins me now with more on this. Aaron, how significant is it to have a new accuser making claims like this on camera as Diddy's facing these criminal charges? Well, look, she is detailing in, in, anguished, uh, in an anguished appearance with mm. her attorney, Gloria Allred, what she said happened to her in 2001 and the lasting impact that she said it had on her and coming after Sean Combs' arrest on criminal charges perhaps lends some additional credibility because he's already been charged in a racketeering conspiracy that <clears throat> sought out women for abuse. She's also filed a civil suit. Could that affect the criminal case at all? The civil suit is at least the 12th filed against Sean Diddy Combs. And the first one from last November by Cassie Ventura is really what touched off the criminal case that led to, to Diddy's arrest and, and subsequent not guilty plea on the, on the three criminal counts. Uh, without the civil suit, there are probably not criminal charges against Sean Combs, uh, but all the civil cases are now likely to be paused while the criminal case takes priority. Now, some of Combs' children issued this statement on Instagram speaking out in defense of their mother, but they didn't really mention their father. What do you make of that? It was a, an interesting statement coming a uh, little more than a week after Combs's arrest here in New York. And the children seemed quite protective of Kim Porter's legacy because there's this 60 page unverified manuscript online that, that claims to be Kim Porter's diary entries or a compilation of, of some of her thoughts. And, and the children said that it just isn't true. And they didn't want her and her memory commingled with him and the criminal case that he's now facing. And what's next in that case now? He's back in court uh, in early October. For now, he is being housed in protective custody at a federal jail in Brooklyn. He's in a, in a dormitory style open housing cell uh, with Sam Bankman Freed, among others. Justin Combs, Diddy's eldest son, is stepping into the spotlight, this time in a courtroom. Justin, who once played football at UCLA, says his relationship with Diddy fell apart, and now he's ready to reveal everything. From missed birthdays to broken promises, Justin claims their family wasn't living the glamorous life everyone thought. People are saying this is about money, inheritance, or Justin trying to make a name outside Diddy's shadow. Whatever the reason, it's clear that things between father and son are beyond repair. My man, I heard about it. I, I even I even watched the whole interview that they had. Um, Derek Lee claims that in 1997, Diddy wrecked him. <laughs> he wrecked a grown ass man. Yeah, he was a bartender. He said, uh, and and I don't want people to think that I think that's funny. But the shit is funny. <laughs> he said, he said, it's sad. He said that 
he was invited to a party and it was girls there it was guys there things got freaky you understand uh he's a bartender he said that uh he was drinking jim bean and uh diddy brought him a drink over and then uh diddy told him i put a little something extra in there and he said uh <laughs> Yo, I'm sorry, man. He said he, he woke up <laughs> butt naked with his thong gone. <laughs> no, no, he didn't say. No, he didn't say that, bro. But he said he woke up and Diddy told him he had him. He said he went. He said he he went. He filed a report, but they threw it up under the. The, the cops swept it up under the rug and everything like that. So, uh, he was suing Diddy and everything like that. So, he said that uh, Diddy came to the uh, jail and said that, hey, I'll give you $2.3 million or something like that. Or 23. I don't know if it's 2.3 or $23 million to make this go away. We'll leave this alone the whole nine yards. Just like I just said, he's going to pay He's trying to pay people off to make things go away for them to drop their suits and everything like that. You know what I mean? And if he does that, if they, they, they civil suit. Drop them, make them go away. What would it take? So this particular dude said that Diddy was trying to sell properties and sell things and stop him from uh, getting his money. And I didn't understand that. But the judge found some validity in what he was saying and say, yo, I'm going to give you a 90-day restraining order against him from selling anything until uh, you get all your paperwork in correct because Diddy was served in the whole nine yards. And as it was said that Diddy and his representative did come to the jail. So if the, if the guy didn't have no, no lawsuit, if the guy wasn't, if, if, the, if, if his stuff wasn't truthful, why would they entertain it? The judge entertained it. Diddy lawyers them entertain it. And Diddy entertained it. So, so, it may be some truth to it. But, <laughs> this dude is raping grown men. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, we can laugh at it, but, you know, it sounds like it's true. <laughs> I mean, Hey, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. And Diddy, he did go to prison and he offered the inmate $2.3 to settle the case. So that's what the paperwork said. And the judge and the judge must have thought he had some validity into what he was saying. What the judge do? He granted him the restraint from Diddy selling the properties until the dudes get his paperwork and everything in. You heard about Diddy Law Firm breaking charge with him and Miami Beach taking his day away? Well, all the things that happened to Diddy. And he losing friends, companies, cities, city names, city girls. I think he should uh, become an altar boy for TD Jakes and give his and, and, and let TD Jakes, you know, put some hands on him and. But it's not just Diddy and Justin. This drama touches the whole family. Justin's even mentioning his mom, Misa Hilton, and hinting at sibling rivalries with Diddy's other kids. And it doesn't stop there. Justin says there's shady stuff going on with Diddy's businesses, record labels, clothing lines, vodka deals. Here's the kicker. Justin's lawyers say they have evidence, texts, documents, maybe even voicemails that could blow the case wide open. And some of the siblings might even back him up. Hey, Fred. So in this audio that CNN has listened to, you can specifically hear the accuser who alleges that she was being forced to take this tequila shot that she believed was laced with drugs. And in the audio, you can hear her asking Christian Combs if she was being drugged. And he answers, take the shot. Now, just to put things into perspective, the accuser was a crew member on the yacht. She was a bartender. And she says that shortly after this incident with the shot, uh, 
Um, she says she was cornered in a room. She says things became aggressive and physical and then says that Christian Combs forced himself on her and then says that it wasn't until another employee on the yacht came into this room that the abuse that she is alleging in, alleging in this 31-page lawsuit stopped. And she says it only stopped because that person came into the room. Now, I want to read part of what the accuser's attorney is saying right now. What he's saying is defendant Sean Combs turned what was sold as a wholesome family excursion into a hedonistic environment. It resulted in an unexpected increase in workload for her and for her colleagues, as well as unwanted exposure to unlawful drug use, sex work, and general chaos. Now, why are they naming Diddy in all of this? And it is partially because he was leasing that yacht. Now, he is not accused of sexual assault, but he is accused in this lawsuit of liability and aiding and abetting because he was the one renting the yacht. Um, now, his attorney, or actually the attorney for both men, also speaking out and denying these allegations, saying this, this complaint is filled with manufactured lies and irrelevant facts. We will be filing a motion to dismiss this outrageous claim. Um, again, they have continued to say that this is something that they will fight, that they are innocent in all of this. So we'll have to wait and see um, how this plays out in court, if it gets to court or if it gets settled at some point, which has been the case with a previous lawsuit. But again, we'll have to wait and see what happens as Diddy and his son continue to say they're innocent and the victims here uh, continue to say that they were sexually assaulted, Fred. And, and so while a music mogul Combs uh, isn't accused of sexual assault in the lawsuit, he has been accused of a range of sexual misconduct in other separate lawsuits. How might that play into this? Yeah, as I mentioned, one of the lawsuits was settled, but there are others that are currently pending, right? And so there's a lot of the uh, details that we've learned, and attorneys say that there's audio and video of these alleged crimes, or at least some of the alleged crimes. You're seeing uh, some of those cases there. The one with Cassie was the one that was settled, but there are other ones that we'll still have to wait and see how they play out. And of course, we all saw just last month as Diddy's Homes in in both Miami and Los Angeles uh, were the target of a federal investigation and we saw that all play out on video last month um, but again it's important to point out that Diddy continues to say that he is innocent they said this was a gross overuse of military level force and they say that he is innocent and will continue to fight to defend courtroom drama is no joke especially when family secrets are on the line Justin is dropping bombshells about Diddy's business deals, hinting that not everything was done by the book. Contracts, money moves, and partnerships, Justin is exposing it all. The courtroom is packed with reporters and fans, buzzing with excitement. Diddy's trying to stay cool, but under that designer suit, he's sweating. The lawyers are throwing objections left and right, but the judge isn't stopping Justin from talking. Who was actually in the studio with him said that uh, Homeland Security brought him in and this dude is a, uh, um, he's a fraternity brother of mine, but he's also a, a producer, an engineer. And he was in the, he was in the studio the night one of the girls made a complaint, the night something happened to one of the girls. And he told the lawyer everything that the girl told him which was crazy and Homeland Security brought him in. So uh, he told them they wouldn't get, they wouldn't let them know what they were doing, but it seemed like that something might happen before Labor Day. Wow. Before Labor Day? Yeah. They working hard on this, bro. They working hard. You got to realize they working with a lot of stuff. They working with the taxes. They got lawyers for the taxes. They got lawyers for the the complaints for is the uh what you call that essay sexual assault complaints they got lawyers for um what else the drugs the gun trafficking they got they got different lawyers working on all those things bro and they got witnesses if you don't mind me asking what was the girl saying to the lawyers oh the girl has said that uh 
that same shit that happened to Lou Chris. He gave him a bottle of champagne or wine or whatever like that. And once she drank it, she became a certain way and found herself giving him a fellatio in the studio in front of people. The dude said he walked out because he was appalled. He had just had a daughter. So he, he walked out. So he was appalled. That's what he told me. So I'm like, damn, team. He said, yeah. So the same thing that she told her lawyer, he told the lawyer and Homeland Security. And he was actually there, graduate, a college graduate. You understand? Working. Good dude. Perfect witness. He told the, the engineer told Homeland Security and her lawyer the same exact thing she told them. He said he was appalled at what he saw and walked out. So they got witnesses. They got witnesses, bro. They have a lot. <laughs> Yo, people want to make up stuff, but they got people who was there that was witness and speaking about it. See, people get mad because I'm saying it first. They hearing it from me. But I could care less how somebody else feel or think. I'm not here to praise Diddy. No, I'm not. Like Brutus told the sentence, I'm here to bury him. Justin's not just spilling business tea. He's airing out family matters too. Missed birthdays, broken promises, and hints that Diddy might have kids out there who don't even know he's their dad. The courtroom crowd is stunned, and it's making Diddy look bad. Meanwhile, Diddy's lawyers are working overtime to shut things down. But the rumors Justin is confirming sound a lot like whispers we've heard for years, and now they're finally coming to light. Told the people that was in the, in, in, in the, uh, I guess, at the studio that time that said that it was a drive-by. This is what the little girl, uh, not a little girl, I'm sorry about that. Uh, her name is Tiffany Red. Just what she was speaking about on her thing, bro. She was saying like, in order to get in that studio, you got to be buzzed in about three or four. Uh, you got to get buzzed in two or three times. There's no blood coming from the outside to the inside. There's all, he got pictures. I saw the pictures. He got pictures of all the blood and everything in the bathroom. He took pictures, bro. Now, Diddy is messing with an investigation of a shooting. If he told people to lie and tell the cops that it was a drive-by, and then he had people that he had hired, that people that he knew that was cops and there was friends of his that came in, that talk to the people that's instruction no no uh, was it instruction uh he's instructing uh of justice when he's trying to interfere with investigation he could be charged with that because nobody was ever found in the shooting so that case could still be open because that kid was shot Obstruction of justice, that's what it is. He obstructed justice because whoever shot that kid in the bathroom, well, it was Lil Wolf, I mean, Lil Wolf, I mean, I mean, Justin or Diddy. One of them did it because three of them went in the bathroom together. G, Justin, and, and, and Diddy. One got shot. Unless the kid gonna say he shot himself. But did he still obstructed justice because he had everybody, he told the people in the studio, he told all the people and he lied and paid everybody off to lie. He probably paid the guy off who got shot and said, yo man, listen here, here take this money and say that uh, it was a drive-by. So if the DA wanted to get him on something, that's enough right there. That's a criminal act. That's an open case. But the police know it's a lie anyway. 
You know why? Why is that? Any of those studios, anybody that have insurance on a facility have to have surveillance cameras a certain amount of feet away from your facility. So if it was a drive-by, they would have to go to the videotape and the surrounding videotape. So they knew that was a lie. But because he had the money and he had the cops on his payroll, nobody did nothing about it. Outside the courtroom, things are exploding. The streets are buzzing with people picking sides. Some say Justin's just a spoiled kid trying to get attention, while others believe everything he's saying. Even celebrities are joining the conversation, and some of Diddy's old friends have suddenly gone silent. Diddy's empire might be on shaky ground. If Justin's claims are true, deals could collapse, contracts might be canceled, and legal trouble could be just around the corner. From that weekend where I'm on the baseball field, walking, and, and, and puffing them is like in front of me right there. I got that picture still. It, it was a Polaroid. <laughs> I still got that picture. So you know how people are gonna make up stuff, they're gonna cut, paste, post, and all this other stuff for views and then try to make it seem like it's something when it's not. Yeah, they're trying to make it seem like it's something that's not. But how you feel about Diddy Lawyer? He trying to get him transferred to a jail in New Jersey to get better access to him? It's not up to Diddy Lawyer. It's up to the prison system. The judge even told him, the judge cannot tell the Department of Corrections, the prison department, how to run a prison. Now, he was supposed to get him in some kind of medical facility because, of the, you know, he's supposed to, he think that his life is in danger. Yeah, every prisoner life is in danger. So they trying to get some special uh, treatment for him. But that's up to the prison system based on his evaluation from his psych evaluation. And they looking at the fact that Epstein, who may have some dealings with Diddy, he died in that place. So they may have a good case, but it's still up to the prison system to decide where he go. And the, the lawyer, and they don't care how much money you got, but it's based on the lawyer. So that's why if you ever see, you've seen online recently, people coming out, they getting XCOs or wardens or detectives to speak out and say how dangerous Brooklyn MDC is. That's their lawyers them paying people to come out and talk about that so to try to help persuade the, the courts, which is the part of the prison system, to see what they're gonna do, would they do anything to say, yo, listen here, man, this guy life might be danger over here because people think that he has something to do with Pac. People think he has something to do with Biggie and they right here in Brooklyn. You understand? It's right here in Brooklyn and uh, some of the people are still mad that he made uh, uh, make another band walk to Brooklyn from, you know, to get the cheesecake and just around the corner from the cheesecake factory. So, I mean, juniors, so it might be some dumb sh So y'all need to get him out of here and ship him to Jersey because somebody gonna kill him over here. Those are the, those are good arguments, if you wanna call it, but it's bullshit. He gonna get the same treatment, no matter how much he got, money he got, from the correction officers. Because if they don't and they get caught giving him uh, what preferential treatment, they're going to lose their job. So you feel like Pac fans will try to do something to him? Pac and Biggie fans. 
He can have issues with both of them because a lot of people think because of the statements that Keith M. D. made that he did something to Pac. A lot of people know or think that because of Biggie leaving, they finding out that Biggie was leaving bad boy, that he may have had something to do with Biggie. People feel that way. You hear it all the time. You see it all the time on the, the chats and all that stuff. Have you heard the reports about Diddy being worried about his kids? Bro, he get phone conversation. He get a phone call just like everybody else. And now they got all kinds of uh, things where they got guys got iPads, people <laughs> guys got telephones, iPads and all that in prison. So his kids are well taken care of. This drama is far from over. Justin's revelations are only the beginning. The world is watching and Diddy's business partners are likely scrambling. If these allegations hold up, things could fall apart faster than anyone expected. Get ready. This courtroom battle might just change everything we thought we knew about Diddy's empire. Childhood. Through his childhood, he may have some of that things in him, but a lot of things that he was doing was a learned behavior, bro. You just don't, <laughs> you just don't just, just turn it in, in, in a matter of years, the way he was doing people, man. You understand? Check this out, bro. He led Biggs to his death. He caused the rift between Wolf and BMF that led to Wolf death. Cuss Wolf mother out. Lied about owing him 300,000. Cause you had asked me how I feel and, and, and I'm gonna get into how I feel. Took a good friend of ours who raised money when he had the city college tragedy. A good friend of ours did things to make him popular in Harlem. Let him hang with us, be part of our crew the whole nine yards. Disrespected him and wouldn't help him. This is how I feel about him being locked up and going to jail. Some people, they karma is so strong for what they do and what they did. The stuff that he did to Craig Mack. You understand what I'm saying? The stuff that he did to Black Rob and all those people in the spiritual world right now. His karma was about to catch up. It was a bound to catch up with him. You understand what I'm saying? His karma was bound to catch up with him, brother. So all these things that's going on right now, the learned behavior, what he got from these, these people who was not living spiritually correct with their behaviors and the things that they've done, He go and transfer and do that to people with the fact of all these people that he's hurt, that always helped him and been on his side and been there for him. What's happening to him now is one of the greatest tragedies that we're going to ever read about, bro. This is going to be one of the greatest tragedies that Shakespeare couldn't write and Richard, he couldn't write it in Macbeth. He couldn't write this shit in homie, Romeo and Juliet. This is gonna be one of the greatest tragedies of hip hop, along with Pac's death, along with Big's death. And he brought it on himself because he knew that he was wrong and he knew that he learned something that wasn't right. He no different from right and wrong, bro. You have a you have a way to, to, to change. You know when something is right and when something is wrong. And you know if you're wrong, you get help. He didn't choose none of that, bro. He chose to be who he is. 
And now he gonna learn. It ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun.